Hi there, my name is Alan from Wanda.Tech and today's video is going to be a little different because it's kind of like a vloggish type and not a full tutorial slash review type. Today, I'll be switching out my Dark Rock Pro 4 from Be Quiet, by the way, one of the best air coolers out there, to the Sego Tab AIO liquid cooler. Sit back, relax, and enjoy watching. Majority of this video is filmed way back March 6, which is almost a month now. So by the end of this video, I can tell you guys pretty much everything that I have on experience with the new AIO liquid cooler. Let's get started. As you can see, my CPU is currently at 53 degrees. The max recorded is 71.6 Celsius. Now, if you're gonna check the temperature right now, the actual temperature IRL, 32, so that's the room temperature. And I'm working with this Be Quiet Dark Rock Pro 4, which is an exceptional CPU cooler, except for the fact that the hot air in the Philippines plus this case is not a good combo, even with intake fans. So what do we do? This is where this box comes in. So let me unbox it real quick. In front of you is a Psychotap Frozen 240 AIO with addressable RGB, can cool up to 220 watts of CPU power and Make sure you don't confuse this one with the Segotep Beacle because that one can only cool 200 watts. By the way, this one costs around 45 USD, but I got it for around 35 USD. Of course, inside the box would be the manual, the product itself, it has the RAD, it has the fans pre-installed, the pump, and of course, the brackets for AMD and Intel and thermal paste. All right, we're trying to load up Cinebench 2024. You can clearly see right here, I'm not even doing anything right now. I am currently on 88, 87 the CPU multi-core. Once again, as you can see, I'm still with the Be Quiet Dark Rock Pro 4. Again, it's not the fault of the cooler. I have reapplied, applied that multiple times, but I'm using Ryzen 7 5800X, which is an extremely, extremely hot CPU. As you can see, we're hovering already at the 90 mark. All right, so this is what we got. We got 783 points quite down there, especially against the M1 Max of Apple. And then for our highest recorded stats or highest recorded temperature, we had 92.8. So I'm gonna remove that thing and replace it with this. Okay, we just pulled my cord up. That is low. Okay. This is the thermal paste with the spreader. We're not gonna use the spreader. This one is for the Intel. Right, I found the one for the AM4. They're in a little package for right build the Intel. But this is the small mounts that we're gonna be using. Right about this point, I am testing out if this layout would fit in my case, which it did because that is the most optimal I can do for my case. Okay, it's taking off the plastic time. That's basically yeah, everything so that we have here. Let's first install the pump stuff. Oh and yeah, I have to look for the default AMD bracket slash standoffs because the Be Quiet one comes with a different one. So I just figured out, you can actually move this if you're using the H510 case. That just made things so much easier, look at that. So now I'm flushing here, now all I gotta do is hook this up and then hook that up. At this point of the video, everything is mounted. I'm just trying to secure everything. Maybe it's a little loose, but we're all good here. I'm about to wire it. This is where we are currently at. And it's a little confusing when it comes to the wires and it's a little messy. But this is the AIO pump. And this is the pump header that goes into the pump, which is another system fan, depending on your motherboard. But for me, the system fan, one of them is a pump header uh, for the AIO's motherboards. Now this thing right here, the pump has an RGB header, which comes and connect to the hub, small hub, that the two RAD fans have on. Now, these two things are split up to like three cables. One was connected on the VDG, which is an LED. 
And then one of them is a fan header, which is connected to another system. Fan one right there. So it's a little confusing on the cables, but hopefully this is all right. Here it is, the moment of truth to open up the power supply and it's time to open up the PC. Now the thing here is I didn't get any lights on the pump and also on the fan. So I am not sure if things are working well, but we did boot. Oh shit, okay. It's working now. Loading up. So right now this is what we're getting because none of the fans are working. But it's not plugged in properly. Do you see that? That is probably why. You can see the, the other pin right there. The white. It's outside. It's in now. So hopefully, if I just power this on. And yeah, that is it. We are now golden. Things are working well. Okay, 100% everything is working right now because my CPU, um, at least the system 3, it says 5, 5 RPM, that is the hump working and also we've seen the two other um, ride fans working and also the temperature is less than 50 or at least less than 60. Quick testing right now, look at the temps, we're currently at 82. Look how much less that is compared to the um, Dark Rock Pro 4 earlier. And that was it, easy switching from the air cooler that I had into this new AIO liquid cooler. But how is it like after a month? I cannot say any cons because everything has been positive so far. So yeah, so far so good. You've seen it, the Cinder Bench opening up and my temperatures went so high with the Dark Rock Pro 4. But that's the same temperatures I'm getting while running the Cinder Bench R24 on this new liquid cooler. And that just says a lot because it can sustain the, you know, the kind of high temperatures but not like maxing out my TJ Max, which makes everything throttle so bad. But why is it like that? On most countries, the Dark Rock Pro 4 would perform amazingly. Honestly, the Dark Rock Pro 4 still performs amazing if the AC is on. But majority of the time, my AC is off. My case is just not it. Because it doesn't have intake fans, the Dark Rock Pro 4 is having a lot of hard time just trying to get out that hot air. First, I was hesitant to actually buy it because I was like, this is not the deep cold brand, this is not Arctic Freezer. It's kind of like an unknown brand at this point in time. But I've seen the reviews, I've seen the ratings, so I went for it. And look, it gave me positive things so far. The build quality is great. It has heft to it, of course. The water seems pretty full, um, which makes it great. Also, the LED lights is great. The fan, this is the exact specs of the fan that it has. It has a lot of power. Basically, the performance has been well, even in long rendering times, um, editing, gaming, everything. Hopefully you enjoyed this type of video. It's a little different than my usual full reviews or full tutorials. And um, yeah, don't forget to check out my socials on the links on the description below. Everything about 1.tech and my personal self and channel. So uh, yeah, thank you so much guys for watching. And I will see you guys in the next one. Have a nice day.